Hey YouTube, we're back with a new PC here and this time we're taking a look at an office PC I managed to pick up for really cheap locally. This is the Dell Optiplex 5040 small form factor. And by looking up the model and the rear I.O. video ports, we are probably dealing with an i7 6th or 7th generation here and it does come with a discrete GPU as well. This will be part one of a three-part series video about this PC. We will be testing this with Windows 10 today, with part two being a full Linux Mint review, and part three will be updating it with a more powerful GPU. The only thing the seller let me know is that he removed the hard drive, so we will have to put in our own, which won't be a problem, and going into the BIOS, we can see we are dealing with an i7-6700 CPU with four cores, eight threads, with a 3.4 GHz base frequency, and a max turbo of four GHz and a total of 8GB of DDR3 in dual channel. This motherboard supports only DDR3L, which we can work with, but I was hoping for DDR4 here since it is a 6th gen i7. We can install an either NVMe drive or a SATA SSD in this unit, and for the GPU we have a Radeon R5 340X 2GB DDR3. Not only has DDR3 VRAM, but this particular GPU isn't really a heavy duty card but we'll see how far we can push it. The first thing we need to do is some cleaning. Office PCs like this usually are pretty dusty and they need some love, so you want to make sure you clean it up properly before putting it to good use. This can be finicky to open up and take apart, but they normally have some directions in the case itself, so always pay attention to the small details. And now, let's add our memories and SSD. Alright, now we have everything set up, Windows 10 is installed, drivers are up to date, and let's do some benchmarking, see what this machine is capable of. Starting with Cinebench, the i7-6700 is scoring 62 points on single core and 293 points on multi-core, which isn't too bad for a 10-year-old CPU, and show this unit still can handle workloads decently. We also ran some Blender benchmarks. Unfortunately, the classroom scene failed this time, but getting some expected results from everything else. For gaming benchmarks, we first ran Firestrike with a 875 score and Time Spy scoring 344. The main issue here is the GPU, which unfortunately won't be a great gaming experience, but that won't stop us from trying. Starting with basic usage, this unit would do great even if you don't add the extra 8GB of RAM here. Internet browsing is great, very responsive, with everything loading up very fast, and for light workloads such as simple document editing or spreadsheets, this will do just fine. Video playback is also great, running 4K here on YouTube and almost no drop frames. For everyday use and office work, this PC will serve most people. Now let's see how this unit handles creative work. Most people, including myself, would ignore a PC like this for this kind of use case. But opening up the barbershop scene, you can see Blender is fairly responsible and you can notice some lag while working on something like this scene. The VRAM was constantly topping its 2GB limit, but at least this GPU has the proper architecture to support the latest versions of Blender. With this setup, it's best to stick with lightweight scenes and avoid heavier files. Video editing is doable because of the i7, but I would say 1080p is the best you're gonna get from this machine as is, and you would need a better GPU if you want to get up to 4K. By looking at how well DaVinci works here, it's fair to say graphic design on this PC is totally doable with small and medium sized files. Now let's get on with gaming, but I like start. Cuphead at 1080p, running great. No stutters at all, and this GPU handles it just fine. Two the games like this one or Shredder's Revenge, they work great with this setup, with the GPU barely passing 60% usage.
and now trying Hades, we start seeing some limitations with this GPU. At 1080p, hovering around 30 to 35 FPS. Not great, but still a playable experience. Going down to 900p, we managed to get closer to 50 FPS, but not quite hitting a stable 60. If you want to get to that 60 mark, 720p might be the best way to go. Moving on to some older 3D titles, we are first doing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which is at 1080p with a high medium settings mix, hovering around 75 to 80 FPS, but always over 60 at least. And considering this game is more than 10 years old, this is not a good sign for a GPU. And moving over to Bioshock Infinite, we went straight to 720p low settings, and it just can't hit the 60 FPS mark here. Showcasing how this GPU just ain't gonna cut it for 1080p gaming, even in older titles like this one. To showcase this GPU's limitations, I tried Injustice 2, and even on the lowest settings at 720p, it was barely keeping above 20 FPS, and it was pretty much unplayable. And to wrap up, I tried doing Inferno here, and yeah, it is so not up to the test. Dropping to 720p at the lowest settings hardly gets to 30 FPS at any point. And we see several graphical artifacts, since this game is constantly trying to pull more memory than GCPU can provide. This tells more about how well optimized this game is, instead of how powerful the GPU can be. Is it doable to play like this? Yeah, but not recommended. So no, this won't be a good card for any modern game. However... For emulation, let's start with Dreamcast, and you can see it's not quite stable at 60fps, but this one is on me. I recorded this one upscaled to 1440p, so this is actually working quite well, and it should be a pretty smooth experience at 1080p for this console. Moving over to Dolphin, our GPU can reach 720p on more demanding games like F-Zero. It will depend on the game of course, but this one is always a good benchmark for how much you can go, and I believe most games would be playable at this resolution, so I would recommend keeping this console at 720p. And now we get to PlayStation 2. God of War 2 running pretty well upscaled at 720p, with just an occasional 1 or 2 FPS dip here and there. You should be able to play most of the PS2 library either at 720p or 1080p, depending on the game. This is a really great opportunity to talk about why this GPU doesn't hold up. It was simply never meant to be a heavy workload card. If we compare this card with the HD5570 GPU we tested on the Acer PC, of course we will have better performance, but for a more interesting comparison, let's just remove the GPU altogether and see what happens if we go with the integrated graphics on the i7-6700. We already know how well the CPU performs with Cinebench, but looking at how Blender performs directly, I would say the viewport actually feels more responsive with the iGPU than we have before with the R5. This kind of surprised me a bit, so I just ran a quick Blender benchmark, and looks like this iGPU is handling 3D workloads as well as the R5. DaVinci Resolve runs really well here too, and shows how good the HD530 graphics performs on this CPU. If you keep it at 1080p editing, you shouldn't have any issues with your work. To compare with the previous benchmarks, we ran Fire Strike again and got a very respectable 1058 score out of it. We also ran Time Spy clocking in at 455, both benchmarks scoring higher than the R5 GPU. For the gaming side, Cuphead runs really well on this iGPU at 1080p, and Shredder's Revenge has well running very smoothly at the same resolution. As a side note, I really love how this game looks with the CRT shader on. Testing the iGPU with Hades, this really surprised me. 1080p running at 6fps, no stutters at all. Very superior to the R5 performance. Goes to show how well this iGPU really performs. And of course, old school games such as Half-Life 2, you will have a great time. 1080p running smoothly at 60fps and high settings here. You will have a great time and similar performance to the R5. With Bioshock Infinite, I tried 720p low first and I was getting between 40 to 45fps, but going 900p low gave me a solid performance. Totally playable, staying above 30 FPS at this resolution, with minor slowdowns here and there. 
and of course I tried doing Terno to see what would happen and yeah even on this main hub it is totally unplayable on this iGPU. The R5 was somewhat playable reaching 20 to 25 FPS at 720p low although I do not recommend playing on the R5 as well. To close up with emulation I just tried a couple of games. First comparing F0 on Dolphin, Duobos 720p as well running fine at 60 FPS. Same with God of War 2, which managed to run final native resolution, maintaining the 60 mark, but really unplayable at 720p or over. Our final comparison between the R5 and the i7 integrated graphics was just to show that having a discrete GPU isn't always for the best. And keep in mind, we are working with DDR3 speeds here, and if we had DDR4 RAM, we would get even more performance out of this iGPU. In a nutshell, if you manage to get a PC like this with a similar GPU like the R5 already included on the deal, that is fine. But if this isn't the case, getting a similar GPU won't be worth it. And you would be better off with the integrated graphics if you don't want to spend a lot on something like the RX 6400 or the ARC A310. This was the first video of a three-part series I'm doing with this Office PC. Which you might be wondering, how much did I pay for it? Well, it was a real steal at $10 Canadian. With the SSD, the bay adapter and the extra memories not costing more than $50 combined. It isn't a gaming machine, it won't perform great on heavy workloads, but if you want an everyday computer or just a stopgap option while you're saving for something else, which can do some light work, including creative work with Blender or DaVinci and a combination of indie, older 3D games and emulation, this would be a great choice for you, especially if you can snatch something like this for cheap. In part 2, we'll be doing a full Linux Mint review, showing what I believe is the best way forward for a machine like this, and in part 3, we'll be doing our testing with a mystery GPU installed on this PC, and see how well we can perform against the R5 and the iGPU. I hope you all enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you found this content cool, leave a comment if you would grab an office PC like this, and if you have, let us know how it's working out for you. Are you gaming on it, are you doing some work, or is it just a day-to-day -day computer for you? Thank you very much and see you on the next one. Cheers!